Hey everyone, and welcome to the voting for the Maven Coffee Challenge. Today we'll be discussing the five finalists for the main prize, Yasmin, Adrian, Stefano, Arena, and Karen. We'll be judging their projects by using the challenge objective to leverage insights from the Great American Taste Test and share an explanatory report providing a data-driven strategy for a group of investors opening their first coffee shop. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. So Yasmin's project really caught my attention right away. One of the first things that kind of caught my eye here was Yasmin's title, which I can click into um, his actual dashboard and show you. It says, for a coffee business targeting the premium segment, fermented coffee presents a clear opportunity in the U.S. market. Um, I thought that this title was really effective in kind of communicating the very highest level theme. And if you were to just read that alone, you would walk away with a really good understanding of the entire rest of the dashboard. And like to have that happen in a single sentence, I thought was really impressive. Um, kind of similarly, something that I really thought set Yasmin's entry apart from the others was that continuation of really clear, really descriptive chart titles, along with the charts that kind of back up that top line recommendation. So you'll see, you know, um, distinct preference for fermented coffee among US coffee tasters indicates a lucrative niche. Awesome. I don't really even need to look at that chart to see exactly what he's trying com to communicate. Um, so I thought that was a really, really great kind of thing that he kept going throughout his entire dashboard. Not only that, but he really, I think, used color in a really st strategic way throughout the dashboard, including in those titles. Um, he kind of mentions in his about section that he specifically chose red for the fermented coffee um, in order to kind of show its distinction among all of the others. And that really does show kind of stand out here. I think that, you know, you're immediately drawn to that red throughout the entire dashboard, which is exactly what his intention was. Um one, I think one of the things that we all talk about a lot here is kind of best practice in dashboard design. And again, I think Yasmin did a really, really great job with his chart choice. Uh, you'll see that he really only used like the, the simple kind of column charts, 100% stacked bar charts throughout. And it's really, I think, making it super easy for anyone to really understand, regardless of experience with data. Um, I think that kind of similarly looking at this, this strategic blueprint here, he's really including this you know, this all-inclusive thing where an investor could look at this dashboard alone, they could interpret it, and then they could also just read that blueprint of very specific actionable items. Um, so I thought that was a really great way to kind of lay out this, this dashboard. And then I think the last thing here that I really wanted to, to touch on was Yasin's about section. I really appreciated the thoughtful discussion on the structure and the layout of his project um, and the additional insights he included. So you'll see for each chart, he kind of talked about what the chart was, but then he also kind of dug in a little bit more and expanded on the points that he had already laid out in the dashboard. Um, he also at the very end down here, you'll see that he provides a quick kind of mention of a, a potential bias. And the whole point is that the survey results came from a, a very specific coffee YouTube channel, meaning that all of the people who took this survey were obviously already interested in coffee. Um, but he does follow that up with saying that, you know, even though that may be the case, the insights are still relevant, especially for investors who are thinking about starting a coffee business with a focus on a niche audience. Um, I think it was great to kind of call attention to that potential bias, but then also sort of offset it with a, that's okay, because that's exactly the audience that we are attacking trying to target here. Um, so really, I, th I personally thought that Yasmin's entry was one that I recommend people check out as a really great representation of, of best practice, of really presenting a clear picture. And, you know, it's I thought it was a really great entry here. Yeah, it makes me want to try fermented coffee. I, I thought that I was somewhat knowledgeable about the coffee world and I, I don't think I've ever had it. So now I feel like I need to lower my uh, experience rating here to match with this audience. One thing yeah. I will say that I would have loved to was kind of maybe like more of an explanation on exactly what fermented coffee was. I think we did see that in some other presentations. Um, but at the same time, it's still like no matter what it is, it still kind of stands out as as the one that he would have chosen for those investors. I don't know if he gets into this, but I know that the coffee market, at least in the United States, there's a coffee mar like coffee shop on almost every corner. So I, 
I really like that he's thinking about a competitive advantage for the entrepreneurs that he's making these recommendations to um, as, as something to stand out in the market for sure. Yeah, and I was going to say, like, just look, just looking at the dashboard, there is one thing that really stands out after having seen a bunch of these dashboards. We've had over 150-something entries, right? And this, this this is really business business like dashboard i don't see a shade of of coffee color uh, anywhere on this however it's crisp like it's really clean it's really polished it's really easy to read and it's one of those situations where, where, where people get carried away by getting the the tone of the whatever the topic is right if, if you're doing coffee that we are using overabundance of 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 uh uh, brown colors or, or whatnot, but he steers clear of that. And instead we get less, this really executive looking polished report. I love it. I'll just add, like, I agree that at, at first I thought like, ah, oh, it's like, he's only focusing on the fermented coffee, but I think like it does work in his favor in, in the sense that you mentioned, Chris, where it's like, like, yes, there is an actual opportunity here. It's not just like, oh, well, here's this saturated market, but here's the best way of going about it, like actually noticing. And I think you paid it off by saying, I've never had fermented coffee. You know, like how, A, like people tend to like it. B, it looks like it's the connoisseurs that tend to like it. And C, like it looks like those same people are willing to pay more so you can like leverage all that stuff. And I think he does a great job um, doing that. Uh, I, I do say, like, even though these are all stock, like these are all just, bar charts. I don't know about you, Lauren, but I had trouble interpreting some of these at first glance, um, more so than I would have expected, like, especially the ones on like the top right there, where like the, with the reds at the right, like it took me a lot to realize that the top one was like distribution of like selections, that, like people that chose five and the bottom one was one. And then the ones, I don't know, maybe I'm getting in my head with all this, but I, I struggled more than I thought I would to interpret some of these bar charts, even though they're bar charts. Yeah, I think, I mean, I obviously took a, a good amount of time to like dig into this one in particular, but I think that that's a really good call out that like, if you are somebody who only has, you know, 10 minutes to review this, it might, there might be a way to kind of clarify that and make it a little bit easier for somebody to interpret. And and to your point though, Lauren, like his his headlines, like you almost don't need the, the, the charts are almost performative in the sense that his headlines are extremely clear and his thesis is extremely clear. So the charts, I you know, are almost like a support of his claims, but like because it, and like to show that they're backed by data, um, but like at least he has explicitly stated his thesis and interpreted that for us, which should make that process a little bit easier. Even though, to your point, Enrique, like I think just the density of information that makes it a little bit hard to navigate. We're going from different measures, different categories within those measures each time, so it's it's not like a consistent look at, um, you know. Every axis is basically changing, which does add to that uh, mental load for sure. That was a good way to describe what the axis changing. I will say, and like I know right now we're just looking at the report. I don't know, Lauren, if you want to X out of that, but I think it's about this project section. Like, I love that he he does have it like in each title, and he adds more context in each one of these. Like, I think this write up was like very clear, very concise, and it's bringing each like in each relevant like chart to whenever he's talking about it, which like I think is just a great best practice for anyone to follow. And I'll. I'll I'll dig into this when I talk about Karen's in, in in the future, but I think it's actually something that was missing from their analysis. I think they had all, like all the right information there, but like structuring it in this way with bringing in the relevant charts in, I really did just does make it a lot better. I think we know Yasmin is just great at storytelling in general. Yeah, one thing that um, stood out to me for like calling out that Yasmin did that I didn't see done or didn't see done as effectively in all the dashboards was the call out that he put in the bottom uh, right hand corner, talking about how the data might not be representative of the entire US population, and kind of having that call out to like, what are some of the weaknesses in the survey? I know in some of the other ones, we kind of alluded to it, but I really liked that he gave visual weight to it and made that really clear to the investors that this is a potential thing that you would want to do more analysis on in order to get this really um, firm idea of what your your coffee drinkers of the future would like. And I was just going to nitpick really a lot in the end, like in the dashboard itself, I noticed that, that the sort of conclusion was at the bottom left, which leaves this impression that after you read through all of those points, there's actually something more to read through. Uh, 
probably the, the, the reading pattern isn't maybe ideal. Uh, that said, the amount of information isn't too large and it this can still easily be navigated. This is unfortunately the case with a lot of the other entries that we've seen where people really overloaded their dashboards with ton of information that made them really, really difficult to consume. But again, to Enrique's point, Yasmin is, as we know, a great storyteller, so he steered clear of this pitfall. So I'm really excited to be providing a talk through of Adrian's project. Now, Adrian's project caught my initially because it was so visually appealing. And when we just kind of take an at-a-glance look at the project, we see that there's some really effective choices here that help draw our attention in. First thing that stood out to me, very similar to what Lauren was just talking about, was the color palette. And in this case, Adrian has used a contrasting color palette. And there's been some incredibly strategic choices in using that contrasting orange color to draw our attention to specific areas of focus on each of the visuals. And Adrian made another really unique choice that I don't think I saw in anyone else's submission. And that's where there were pictures used along the top to represent the different segments of age groups that were included in the survey. And for me, I found this like a really skillful way, not only to just grab my attention at the beginning, but I was thinking about the investors and how this might make this data really approachable for them, focusing in on the customer and what the customer experience would be like. And now that Adrian has grabbed our attention, it really pays off when you start working through the dashboard. First, from a flow perspective, Adrian lays things out in a very nice Z pattern with distinct sections that are representing each of the questions that were asked in the brief. And Adrian repeats a really effective framework within each of these sections where first data is presented, and then underneath it, there's text that provides both an observation and a very clear recommendation in the form of a sentence that answers the question that was posed. Now, digging in a little bit deeper, there's another great thing I see here that Adrian did to build the story as you move across the dashboard. Up at the top, Adrian provides some data-driven answers to the question about what client segment we should be focusing on. But then in the next sections, Adrian has made the choice to narrow down the data so that it's presented to only focus on those client segments. So this really created for me a sense of story unfolding across this entire document. Now, a little bit of constructive feedback that I would have for Adrian is really to focus on first this one visual here for the favorite coffee drink preference. Across the dashboard, we see Adrian has done an incredibly effective use of color gradients in the heat maps and even over on the bar chart. But in this one visual, we see that there's just one color applied and it's not really using bar length to indicate the difference in the values. So just a small tweak here to apply some of the principles that we see in the other visuals would really help tighten this one up. And I would also encourage Adrian to add a little bit more detail in the about section just to share more about your process and how you prepared this project. But overall, it's a stunning presentation that I felt would really engage the investors and give them some of those answers to the questions they were looking for. So thank you so much, Adrian, for the fantastic submission. I'm going to jump in here right away and say, um, Stacey, I really appreciate that you called out those, like the, the pictures of people. I think that um, thinking about kind of like that ideal customer, having a an image of somebody in mind is always going to be more impactful than just kind of giving the, that person's like statistics. You could very easily have left these pictures out, but I do think that kind of having, having that image in my head kind of helps me in terms of thinking, okay, well, this is the person that I would be gearing towards, or this is the person that I would really want to focus on. Um, and I also just kind of, while I have the floor, I'm also going to say, I love the use of the, the orange dashed box around that kind of like, um, the, you know, the ideal customer and the the pricing strategy, I think that that really is effective in terms of drawing attention exactly where Adrian intended it to be um, drawn. So I love both of those kind of aspects of this. And now that you've stolen everything that I was going to say, I just have to reiterate, I love the pictures. Like you can almost imagine people, managers sitting and they'll, they'll like discussing this idea and visualizing person coming through the door of the coffee coffee house, like of the coffee place whatever it may be restaurant uh like there is so many other uh, entries where we see a bunch of statistics a bunch of those uh fancy charts but 
you cannot really you cannot really look at the person and say hey this guy is number seven on our one to ten education scale when it comes to coffee right there is nothing there is nothing but 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 when you do something like this it, you, you can very very easily imagine a person of this profile coming in and then what they would want also awesome idea to your point lauren this wouldn't be any less pretty if there weren't pictures there right uh but it's just such a, such a nice touch yeah and i think to your point brano um you know one of the biggest challenges with this project just based on our submissions wasn't necessarily, you know, visualizing the data. I think there was a lot of great ways to look at this data, but the hardest part was really condensing down your findings into a, a focused, you know, visual that, you know, had recommendations. A lot of, uh, you know, some submissions would just sort of throw the kitchen sink at us and let make us sort of figure out exactly what we wanted to do. And so I think this strategy and, and one of the common threads, you'll, you know, we'll see in a lot of the finalists is really focusing down on um, you know, helping us reduce the noise by focusing on the most important information. I think Adrian does an excellent job at that overall. Yeah, I think I agree with that, Chris. And I think some of the like some of the minor like decisions here, I was really impressed with that I didn't notice at first glance. Like, like it's very easy to like see like the pictures, the how they're like each represent like an age group, and how like the rectangle around those three are like the target segment, but like just looking at, I know there's a key on top of those, but like the potential customers for me was very interesting. So yes, you have like the survey participants that were, you know, were in each one of those age groups, but the potential customers just like from those participants, like which ones are coffee buyers at cafes are on the go. And those are decisions that a lot of people made, but I like how it was incorporated here. And then the satisfaction level was, oh, like of the potential customers, not the participants from that age group, like what is their perceived like good, how, like what percentage of them think that they're getting good value at cafe specifically. So I think those decisions I was really impressed with too. I think to your point, Stacey, as well of the about this project section, it kind of left me wishing a little bit more as well. For example, I know we had that, you know, you made the comment about the pour over latte portato, um, like visual. And you kind of act like wonder like, oh, I wonder why they made that decision. And you don't get the answer that maybe you were hoping to get there. I know when we were talking about Yasmin's before, um, we were asking, I wonder why he chose red, right? I know it wasn't during this conversation, but we've had that in the past. And if you look at his about section, you can clearly see like he will tell you why he made those decisions, uh, which I think just helps to kind of like look behind the scenes a little bit uh, at the work that was put into this otherwise, you know, great project, I think. All right. So when I first took a look at Stefano's visualization, I was a little bit confused. Um, Stefano is one of our previous challenge winners and has you know, produced some amazing technical work in the past. But when I came to this submission, I didn't really see a data visualization, which you know really sent me spinning a little bit. Uh, but you know, not surprisingly, this ended up as a challenge finalist because the more time that I spent with this, the more I really understood what he was trying to do. Um, and so let's go ahead and take a look at this in another screen so we can get the full view. And so what's a, what Stefano has submitted here is a menu that ideally as the analyst or consultant of this project, he can review with the entrepreneurs looking to, you know, start their first coffee shop. And in this, and in this menu here, he actually addresses all three questions of our prompt. Who's the advised target audience? What does the menu look like? And what should the pricing be? And this is a visual format that we're all extremely familiar with. We've all looked at a menu. Um, and a lot of the times from my knowledge, uh, business you know, entrepreneurs actually have to submit menus to banks to get funding for uh, their business plan. And so having a menu and having a deliverable in this format is actually quite clever. And it's something that would be very easy to digest with, uh, you know, as, as you walk through it with an entrepreneur. But that doesn't mean that Stefano didn't do any analysis. He actually did a ton of analysis behind the scenes, which makes this finished product, you know, definitely a risky choice. But in my mind, I think it works quite well. Uh, and so starting with some of the key takeaways from this is one thing that I really liked about Stefano's analysis is his target audience. So there's been a few other, uh, you know, submissions that talk about how the, the data might be quite biased in terms of demographics, which presents a problem, particularly if the demographics of your local market don't match those of the YouTube channel. So what Stefano did, instead of focusing on demographic characteristics like age, gender, ethnicity, he focused on behavior. 
These are broad-based behaviors that can capture a wide array of demographics. And fundamentally, he wants his shop to focus on people who you know, drink coffee every day at a coffee shop. They might sit down, work a little bit, et cetera, um, as well as people who are out of home on the go, picking up their cup of coffee, likely on their way to work or somewhere else. And so I think by focusing on the customers you know, that were most common in this aspect, not only will the you know, not only will this translate to different geographies and, and different uh, places with different demographics, but it also helps the, the business plan for the types of interactions they're going to have with customers with these different behaviors. Um, and along the way, you know, Stefano provides pop-ups that help define these key terms. We still don't see too many visualizations. There's a whole write-up for that, um, but he is giving us key insights. So we see that daily coffee drinkers are 25% of the population out of home coffee drinkers are 56. So we're capturing over 80% of the market with these two behavioral patterns. Um, we then move into our pricing and products. And so again, the how Stefano derived these was he looked at the survey and said, 90% of customers have their favorite products in this menu. These are the preferred drinks of over 90% of the population, which I think is really smart. If you try to make your business cater to every single niche preference. That means a lot of investment in equipment, product, and, and training. Whereas if you focus on a smaller menu, you should be able to operate efficiently in terms of cost and quality. And finally, he does the same for his, his flavors as well. And so again, we really haven't seen too many uh, visualizations. That's what this PDF is for. And so I think in terms of presenting something to an entrepreneur initially, that's a really smart way to go. Here are my summarized recommendations. And then if you're in a meeting with your client, you can walk through some things. So there's some really nice visualizations in here, but my favorite out of all of them are these Pareto curves that indicate how he got to his final recommendations for product. And so for example, pour, pour over, right, is, is the favorite product of you know, about 28% of people, but he draws the curve and where he drew his line for his menu was when we get to 90% of the population, that's when, we, that's when we draw the line. We don't need to go into these more marginal products that are going to require us to keep things on hand. At, let's just focus on the the, the biggest hits. Um, and there's a lot of great analysis in there. And so it certainly was a very risky decision to not <laughs> put a bar chart or any sort of visualization we're looking for. But overall, I think it really is a very clever way to make recommendations to the audience that we asked him to make recommendations to. He addressed all of the prompt and he backed it up with data that sure was a little bit hidden away but I think ultimately this is a very effective way to produce this final set of recommendations for this specific product. Probably the biggest, you know, I think the biggest, you know, potential knocks on this one is just how risky it is to, you know, submit this for a visualization product. I personally think it paid off. And the other thing is just, I would add um, is his, his write-up is very detailed, which is very good. So this is a nitpick, but um I would probably put the technical work later on and, and, and try to begin with an executive summary because we don't get to his findings. And he, he wrote a, basically a novel here uh, until very late. And so I might move um, an executive summary of insights up to the top and then he can dive into those analysis. And if people have those thoughts, they can, they can do that. But in, in many ways, his, his visual is sort of an executive summary. This is what your menu should be. Um, and if you need more information, you can find it elsewhere. But I think this is really clever, Stefano, and, and very creative. So well done. I have to say that I, I was ready to skip this one this time around. Uh, it was one of those choices when when pressed for time, you were, I was looking for a hook. And then, like, to your point, Chris, seeing this very unusual, I was, I was sort of expecting from Stefano, knowing, being familiar with his previous work, uh, I was expecting uh, something at like at maybe even complex or more complex than this in terms of technical technical presentation like some features options i know he loves this kind of things and then where i i i found the pop-ups and that was it i i almost completely missed the missed the pdf but then when you open that, that it's a whole whole new world uh that you can dig into definitely definitely a very interesting choice here yeah, and I honestly, I, I, I didn't. So when we review these projects, right, we open dozens of projects at a time and sort of whittle them down. And this was one that I was like, I'm going to come back to this one after looking at a few more. This is one of the first ones that I looked at, but I, I just couldn't, 
I couldn't quite close it out because I knew I, I just thought Stefano might have something up his sleeve. And so I came back to it and spent a little bit more time with it. And that's, that's when I, yeah, found the, you know, the, the breadth of detail and analysis that he had really done. Yeah, I think, Chris, I'm grateful as well that you called the attention to this one because I did miss the PDF. So totally admitting that I missed that little detail. But in hindsight, this is a strategy that I've seen be so effective when producing to senior leaders, right, is giving them that executive summary that hits the key notes that they're looking for, kind of gives them what they really need now. But then having a backup report for any of those detailed questions. And like you mentioned, when you go through the PDF, you almost can't envision a question that you can't answer from there. So I don't know that he maybe intended for everyone to read it like from top to bottom, but I could for sure see this as a scenario where it's like, if you turn to page X, then you're going to see this visualization that was based, this decision was based off of. So I feel like it was a really savvy choice and also a real life example that would like keep you in good stead with your investors if you were having this conversation. I think one thing too that I didn't see, I don't recall it seeing in anybody else was um, the the word clouds that Stefana created, um, kind of looking at each of the coffees and he, I guess, took the notes of each, per, of each um, person who tasted those coffees and put them into a word cloud. Um, and kind of, and I believe that is how he came up with his recommendations for coffee flavors. So for instance, I think one of the coffee bean types was, um, fruity coffee beans and specifically got as specific as saying blueberries, um, you know, if possible, which I don't think I saw anywhere else, but I think that that was exactly like specifically dependent on those word clouds. And I thought that was a really, really clever use of kind of digging into not only the type of coffee, but then also thinking about exactly what flavors people are interested in. So that was also kind of just a really nice addition. Um, I will also echo what everybody else said. I, I did find the PDF and I, he, Stefano was absolutely, you know, somebody that I was really impressed by, but I think that um, if I had just been skimming through these very quickly, which you know, is with as many entries as we have, um, a lot of the time that that first visual needs to be something that catches the eye. Um, and I can see like this, this was one that was kind of a, a little bit sneaky and I loved that, but also I could, I, I, I agree that it was definitely a risk to take. Yeah. I, 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 to not repeat my, like what everyone else is saying, I similar thought that at first I was surprised and then I was pleasantly surprised as I spent more time with this, uh, I, I agree with the word clouds being something that I didn't see anywhere else. And that just gave that extra like added element to the menu where you're actually like suggesting bean types using that field. And I think personally, like as an analyst, if I can call myself that, like that's one field that I would have typically ignored in the survey data set, like where it's just like add any additional notes that you may have about the flavor. And at the fact that not only that they took this step, but that it did actually lead to some very like clearly like insightful word clouds, I think was just amazing to see and like does make it like a better menu recommendation at the end than at least the ones that we've seen so far, which is just, I know Yasmin mentioned the fermented, which is great, but here we can see that like Coffee D, which was a fermented one, had fruity notes, had blueberry notes. You can see sour in there, uh, berries. So like that is just like an extra element, right? Which, which, it's still data-driven and, and I loved. Um, I, I I agree that the write-up um, like does help provide that additional context because I know like you can look at this menu and say, oh, great. Like, but, but like, what did you do to make these decisions? And I think like, even though the charts are there, sometimes I think it's like one too many. I think like if you go to the Pareto charts, for example, Chris at the top, like it's broken down by the two different target audiences the Pareto is almost identical. So I think just like grouping those into a single chart. Uh, so you're just looking at a single Pareto that has the same takeaway, just makes everything just more concise and like kind of keeps you reading versus just like seeing all of these repeated charts. I think it, it happened as well, in my opinion, when you, when you start to look at those price curves at the end where he's like looking at like, oh, at after $8, you start to see that people are no longer willing to pay but it's broken down by all the different like favorite coffee types. And like, to me, like the underlying pattern is mostly the same. Maybe you can, I think it was actually those, like maybe you can break out some like different ones 
from there, but showing all of them to me just starts to become overwhelming. And I don't even like, I stop looking at just even one. So I think condensing that information to, into like more deliberate charts, even though this is the behind the scenes, I think it could have been a little bit more polished. Um, especially seeing just how polished that menu was. Like, I think you might, even if the executives did ask for the write-up, you might still lose them uh, just because of the way it's presented. And I think there's just some like minor tweaks that could have made it like just that much better. But I, I know we're just nitpicking here and I think this is all great, but I do have this, those thoughts. No, that's a really good point. And I, I hadn't really thought about that in that context, but I, I agree that this type of visual is almost for like an appendix. Um, unless you see like a clearly different pattern by coffee type, which would be an amazing insight. But if we're seeing to your point that like the patterns are roughly the same, then we should be condensing back like this. We should be dis at like this, like re just basically un like, aggregating it all back together and analysis, like and analyzing it as a whole, because there isn't any serious insight coming from, from this kind of brute force. I think it's great, um, practice to look for these types of differences but to your point if the conclusions aren't different then it is just noise um so that's that's very fair okay so i'm happy to talk about irina's entry to this challenge uh irina is our rookie so she this is her first entry to one of maven analytics challenges and it is a very good one considering uh so actually we're going to spend the entire time in the project write-up because as you will see down at the bottom, she actually embedded the whole thing right there. Uh, makes my job a little bit easier for sure. Uh, so off the top, it's the usual. It's the usual talk about the the, the data cleaning, the tooling, the just just the just some entry level stuff to make everybody understand what the project is about. Uh, but then then she then there was this piece with data exploration, and that's that's where this becomes very interesting. Uh, we've heard already talk about the bias and there were i know from linkedin then the, the, that there were some very difficult difficult uh, different excuse me views on this uh but the fact is that she also mentioned this bias and she does tend to lean uh to that side of that uh, conversation that says that okay there is a bias but in this particular case because these people are trying to enter into this market it doesn't carry that much weight furthermore as she explains here, it's not just about the fact that these people people are are coffee lo lovers. It's that they are actually interested in this specific YouTube channel, right? So that's even more biased compared to I think everybody else that we've seen, right? So not only do we assume that these people already like coffee, but they are also like a certain type of presentation. They may be like this influencer or something about his style and are maybe influenced by him specifically. Uh, that's a very interesting call out that I didn't really see anywhere else. And so with that in mind, what she does is she uses clustering, like she uses a machine learning algorithm to cluster to basically mine the data for insight. Right, she explains here what her what are her criteria and what she used for the k-means clustering, and she comes what we comes up with three distinct personas. Let's call them in this data that are then designated as a casual coffee drinker, educated coffee drinker, and a coffee connoisseur. All of them, all of these people, on average, sharing sharing some similar either demographics either by behavior traits uh but essentially this is this is this is this is the root of everything that she that she does afterwards right and i love the fact that she sort of calls out these uh percentages we will see them, see them also a little bit later uh because they tend to confirm the bias just like by looking at them without a lot of fancy math uh, the casual coffee drinker is only pre present in about 12% of the data set, which makes sense if if these are the people who are coffee lovers, right? It, it stands to reason that that casual coffee drinkers, people who are not that much invested, would be the smallest portion of the data set. Uh, and that's that's presented right here, actually elaborated on right here in this section. And I love the fact she used a very smart approach so 
this is a little bit long. I'm going to try to show this. I cannot unfortunately expand it. Uh, she uses these verticals, right? So these vertical boxes are each of each of the personas, right? And if you scroll down, everything in the same vertical is the same persona, right? Plus, where that's not possible, she uses an additional layer of color coding. So when you see this sort of greenish color, that's everything related to, to casual drinkers. Uh, this brown is the ed ed educated drinker. And then we have the coffee connoisseur to, far, to the far right. And it goes all the way until the end, right? So it it is a lot that's pro for my taste, for an executive dashboard, this would probably be too much information, uh, but it's not that difficult to follow. We've seen a ton of other entries that had a similar amount of information that the sort of break down really fast as soon, as soon as you try, as soon as you start scrolling through these things, right? And so right here, we have those personas and we have their their statistics and this is this is it's it, it this is taking me back to to the to Adrian's work with with the images like we see a lot of these charts charts here that support certain type of behavior or other but how cool would it be to have some sort of visual image of a person that that would be that would be considered a coffee connoisseur for example uh as i said like she she goes on to to define She's basically answering all three challenge prompts in the subsequent sec sections. I quite like the heat maps. Like you can immediately see without even digging into the numbers, you can see the difference in, in, in certain behaviors and certain certain elements of these customer groups. Uh, and finally, she finishes with some very strong and very actionable recommendations. Like if you if you were to read through all of this, like, it is very specific. It's, it, she goes on like, if you are opening a coffee place in a city center, then it's more likely that persona A, B, or C will come there. So you should fill it with this type of coffee, and it's 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 really quite detailed. Uh, one couple of things that I will note is, again, in my opinion, for an executive level dashboard, this is a little bit too much, and I. I, I cannot help I, I cannot help but seeing that 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 repeated behavior that we see through these challenges where people are for some reason almost drawn uh, to showing the same same type of same type of analyses using different visuals. Like for example, over here we have a bunch of categorical slices, and we have to do this mental exercise where we have to understand one chart and then the next and then the next they're all different but basically we're looking we're looking categorical breakdowns of our, of our data so why the extra effort right uh, another thing is again from a perspective of an executive dashboard some of this stuff simply isn't on the same level of importance right like if you look at the pricing strategy over here it makes a ton of sense to dig into that but then below we have coffee add-ons which true are important but should probably shouldn't live on the same level as the prices or definition of a cost uh, of a customer or, uh, audience and profile but again this is Irina's first entry with that in mind this is really 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 solid yeah i definitely agree i think especially for first entry this is a really really great um, place to start. I think that a lot of the information that she provided, and I, I appreciate kind of how you broke down, um, you know, either she either did it by the the vertical boxes or by color. I thought that all of that was really smart and really easy to understand. Um, one thing that I do walk away with is there's a lot of information in each of these sections, and it would be really great to kind of have a bottom line for each of them. I kind of walk away with, okay, now I have a ton of information but I have to wait until the very end to see your recommendations for that. Um, so maybe thinking about like ways to kind of consolidate and summarize as you go and then provide recommendations um, would be something that I would, would consider personally, especially as it is, you know, for an investor or for a stakeholder, it's something that they would potentially also benefit from is, is kind of keeping in mind, okay, this, you know, I'm giving you all of this information and here's what it means. So um, just kind of something that I would really like to see in the future. 
Yeah. And to your point, like if we go back up, um, there's like the other highlights. And I feel like that's the offer. Like if we were doing that, but summarizing like key takeaways or, you know, what does this mean versus giving us like additional facts about this demographic? Like I think, I think that that's the switch that I think would probably, yeah, would really help the user to your point. Um, Cause otherwise, again, it's like, I just looked at three visuals and now you're giving me like seven additional like metrics to juggle around in my head. And I'm only in the first section of this. I should be like closing the book on this and you should be kind of guiding me as the user uh, before we move on to the next, you know, section of our, uh, you know, recommendations and, and visuals. Yeah, I did note that Irina had um, completed this in Power BI. And I wondered if there was any use of like toolboxes, um, pop-ups to be able to show those drop downs. Cause to the point of what we're talking about, wouldn't it be great if you could like turn on when you saw that more detail, a little bit like what Chris had shown with Stefano's where you had the information uh, button that you were able to actuate and then get the more detail on there. So that would be an interesting thing to see how this could go to like a next iteration where you had those high level details, but then the ability to pop up all the information, because I really like the comparison that um, is done in if, Bronislav, if you don't mind going down with the pricing here, I really like being able to see it across the three because it would really help you kind of define what target you're going for. And so I, I feel like there's um, the opportunity to do that dig in that maybe the tool itself could help support. Yeah, for sure. It would be, there is, there is a lot here that, that could be sort of wrapped up in, in some sort of optional menus that you can, I'm not sure if, because this is embedded in, in, in the project write-up. Uh, I don't know if there is any interactivity, which again, uh, I'm not sure if Irina is aware that using Maven Analytics, you can actually get access to Power BI and embed this stuff live uh, without without any cost whatsoever. Uh, we really have to broadcast that a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, to your point, to your point, there is a lot here that could that could sort of be condensed and then only called when needed. Yeah, it's 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 so it's such an interesting case this one because like I think like it might be like my favorite approach with you know how it starts with the clustering and how it shows the demographics. So it's like the beginning is almost like perfect for me. And then the end is almost like, I think that like it's, she has some of the best recommendations out of all the finalists that we've looked at today, especially how it like, it will depend based on like what market you're trying to target based on these personas. And she gives these like actual, like concrete recommendations for each one. It's just that the road to get there is one that I don't think most people are willing to walk, you know, especially if it's, it's, it's meant for executives, which it's, I'm not going to call it a shame because it, 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 it's just a good learning opportunity, right? Like, I know you did all this analysis since you kind of want to show it, but just like refraining or uh, restraining yourself from like showing everything you did and just focusing on the key points is just better in the long run. I, just, I do want to call out from a positive perspective. I think the clustering approach to defining personas is, is, is the best that I've seen in the competition. Like, that's how, you know, data scientists would, would tackle this problem. Um, and it's a good good opportunity for analysts to in, inject some data science techniques into their analyses as well. But when you have a lot of factors, um, you know, there's only so many ways you can cut the data using traditional methods. And, and clustering is a great way to identify hidden groups within your data. And so I really want to commend you for for going through that process because I think it, it, I don't think we've mentioned enough how, how much how much credence and, and credibility it adds to to the the definition of, of user segments here. So that that's a really great work as well. What I love most about Karen's project is that I think follows so many of the best practices that we teach when crafting a strong portfolio project in general. Um, so she leads off with the business context. You've got the questions that she needs to answer and then the expected output. Granted, maybe that's not the hardest step to take because this is what we outline in the challenge description. But the fact that she deliberately put it here, I think is, is something that I applaud. And then from there, she kind of briefly talks about the data set. And right after that, we get the insights that literally pay off these three questions here, right? So you've got, you know, that the target audience should be 18 to 44 year olds and students. You get that the product offering should be similar to coffee A and D. Um, 
Coffee A should be offered year round and with take home beans as an option and coffee D should be offered, I think they mentioned as limited editions throughout the year. And finally, the pricing strategy should be five to $6 for the regular coffees and $8 for the special edition. So all the insights are here. They're right after setting the stage uh, and they directly align with the three questions that she asked and that we asked in the prompt. So I, so I really like that. Plus I think they're ultimately meaty insights, you know, um, that we, we saw in some other reports as well, not so much in others, I'd say. And then from there, she talks about, you know, how she went about putting the report together and intentionally outlining why she made it a single page static A4 report because she wanted to provide it to these investors as a PDF document. Again, I'm sure many people chose the same format, but I think being explicit about it just makes it better because you know it was a deliberate decision and you can evaluate it. And I think in this case, it seems like the right decision to me. Uh, so I like that as well. Um, from there, you'll see that in the report, she starts with the recommendations. It's the same ones that we called out before. I really like them. I think like if you just read this, then you have all you need and you can stop there. Or again, if you have some questions as to how she got to those recommendations, then you can read on, right? And in the project or in the report, you have, again, the three key topics, target audience right here, product offering right here, and the pricing strategy. And I really liked that each visual contains both the insight as the title and the recommendation as the subtitle. So here you've got this basic bar chart, but the title, instead of saying, you know, uh, coffee preference, it's just almost all coffee drinkers drink home with coffee, tap into this market by, by offering take home beans, you know? Younger age groups drink more coffee out, as we can see by the heat map, 18 to 44 are the tar target audience for ready to drink coffees. This one, students are more likely to drink coffee out, let's offer student discounts. I will say that same one-two punch doesn't carry through to the end of the report. You still you still have these here. You can tell we've got the insight recommendation here. But then here we just do have that stock title. We have it here as well. We do have the recommendation. Uh, and here we have the insight without the recommendation. So I think being consistent throughout uh, would have made this like from, you know, from great to completely excellent. Uh, but I do think that at the end, you do, you do get the same takeaways. So I just wish I would continue to get them just so you continue to pay off those recommendations. Now, as far as the chart choices or visualization choices, I think most of these I like. There's none that I have a big problem with. I will say after we look, for example, at Yasmin's with the use of red, after we look at Adrian's with the use of those orange boxes, I think adding an extra visual focus to each one of those charts, each one of these charts that pays off that takeaway is important. For example, this one, you'll see coffee A and D are well-liked, but coffee D is polarizing. If you like in the first two seconds of looking at this chart, you don't get that takeaway. But granted, it's not a bad chart choice or anything. It's just that if they had highlighted A and D and the strongly dislike and strongly like, so you can kind of see that polarization, then it just becomes much more clear. And it really is just that choice of like driving the focus there in the visual itself. Again, the right chart type, but it's it's those extra steps that other people did take that I think could again make an already excellent report like even better, especially if you want it to be quickly scannable for an executive. And then finally, again, with that order that we typically like or we preach, at the end, you've got that extra sort of technical depth on the data prep steps that she took, um, which if you want to read to, you can. If you don't, I think the most relevant part is actually in the first sentence, which is that the records were responded had completed the survey, but not the actual taste test were removed. I think that's smart. I saw other finalists do that as well. Um, so yeah, I think this is one that is just <laughs> very succinct. Um, and I think just pays off exactly what we asked in the prompt in a way that's easy to consume uh, for anyone looking to just like read this project or for an executive wanting to, you know, open their own coffee shop. I have to say that I'm, I'm almost like, it's a very, I like this, this, this these types of entries. Uh, they're to the point and like, I have to say, I'm almost sorry to see that awful, not awful, but difficult to read shade of brown which is like there is so little distinction between those categories and those charts that's unnecessary strain on, on, on the eyes and on the basically adds a ton of effort if you want to understand those charts uh i can see why obviously the topic uh and, and i'm sure a lot of these folks went out and searched for searched for for uh uh, appropriate color palettes and this may 
very well be one, but from a standpoint of an executive or anybody really who, who needs to look at this for a longer period of time, it, for me, I would just li like it if it if it was something else, right? Yeah, Yasmin, Yasmin made an awesome, awesome example with that. Um, I think one thing that I found interesting here was, um, along with Irina, I think Karen had some of the best insights and some of the most specific and like actionable insights. I'm looking kind of at the uh, in the about section where, um, you know, thinking about students had a higher proportion, so offering student discounts. Um, you know, all of these are such great, solid recommendations to provide. And I also, Enrique, to, to your point, I love that these were provided upfront right away. You didn't even have to look at the visualization. Obviously we would want to, but the fact that they are provided immediately is so powerful. And I think that it also really sets the stage for when you're going into that, that dashboard afterwards, you already have this kind of context and this background of here's what I found kind of, you know, similar to Yasmin, here's what I found. Let me provide charts to back up those data points. Um, so I think that really, really great job, especially with those insights. Yeah, I had the same thought, Lauren, especially that student one really jumped out at me. And then there's a visualization that shows like caffeine preference and that fully caffeinated is like 91%. I think what could have maybe helped just a little bit, and I think Bronislav, you mentioned this when you were going through Irina's, was they all have kind of the same visual weight. So just like reorganizing them or Enrique's idea of putting a call out box around them would really help those gems just pop right up because I think they were unique insights that would really yeah, draw the attention of the investors. And... That's all the finalists. So we've got our work cut out for us here. Um, but let's kind of start, you know, who do we think, and I'll just quote the challenge prompt, put together the best report providing a data-driven strategy for opening a coffee shop. I'm going to throw my hat in the ring for Yasmin. Obviously, I that one was one that jumped out to me immediately. Um, but really thinking about that that prompt of like providing the insights that are needed for those investors. I think that he accomplished that goal very well, um, specifically, and I'm going to go back to it again, with the titles on those charts, they are, I think, so clear and so just concise um, that it really is is worth somebody, or he's, he's somebody that I would absolutely put right up there at the top. I'm going to add my sort of support for Stefano and just, not just, but mostly for the fact that I was ready to discard this. And then like Chris totally sold me on the massiveness of the project behind all of this. And I do tend to agree that you could take this, like if you're talking real world impact, you could take this, take this printed and go to the bank, right? Start explaining people what it is that you do and, and how are you going to get them their money back <laughs> at the end? Uh, it's just, just, an, just an amazing, amazing entry. Yeah. I, I'd like to put Irina's in for our consideration for finalists. I think we've heard a couple of times saying that the segmenting that was done here and explaining the different profiles was potentially, you know, one of the best that we saw in all of the challenges. And I think it does meet those requirements of giving us like what we would need as investors and even more detail. So I'd like to put Irina's out there for consideration. Um, I'm still partial to to Stefano, so I, I'm glad someone else recommended it, so I don't look like a you know home team fan like like Lauren does. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, I'm going to have to you know commit the same sin that Lauren had, but I I, I for me, I just kind of keep coming back to Karen's in that like I think it's just a great like like concrete clear way of just like paying off these data-driven recommendations uh in a way that doesn't take you more than five minutes to finish and make your decision which i think might be the case with some of these I, i'd agree that maybe that's not the case with yasmin so i just feel like i wish his recommendations were a little bit less up in the air um i don't know this this is this is tough i this is tough almost all every one of these five has something that makes me want to vote for it yeah, and I know I can, but like, it's it's been a while since it was this stuff. Yeah, and they're also they're also they all went in their own directions, but I think is which is part of the problem. You know, it's it's much easier when 
it's apples to apples, relatively speaking, from like an analytical or recommendation perspective, but they all were, use their creativity to, to take the analysis in its own path, uh, which led to just amazing, you know, findings. I, I, I'm struggling too. It's like, I wish I could kind of hybridize a few of these and, and we would, we would end up with, you know, the super project, but they're, they're all, <laughs> I mean, th this is the, this is might be the toughest one we've had, honestly. I think so. Top three, definitely. All right. So it looks like we've kind of all like a combination of all of these. I think we could just vote straight up uh, across the five uh, and see if we get a winner that way. So let's just go. Yasmin will be one. Uh, Adrian will be two. Stefano will be three. Marina will be four. And Karen will be five. Um, assuming everyone's ready, I'll count us down. Three, two, one. Five, three, three, four. Chris, I can't see yours. Is it yours? Is it a one? Is that Stefano then, I think? Yep. Stefano takes it. So yeah. Um, congratulations, Stefano, on winning another Maven Challenge. Let's give him a round of applause. One one year apart as well, which is great. So as a prize, you'll take home a free annual membership to Maven and a custom Maven Challenge winner t-shirt. Congratulations.